Hey everybody, welcome back to the uh, Area 51 uh, studio, we're going to call it today. And we are doing a product review. And for those of you who like to take pictures, whether it's toys, uh, magic cards, smaller things, uh, 3.75, 6 inch, whatever, uh, I picked this up. This is the Optex Portable LED Photo Studio. And this allows you to take some very nice pictures. Uh, in a kind of a, a box to give you a background that looks like there's an infinity background. That's what I like to call it. This has LED lights in it. It has two ports where you can take your pictures. And it is made by a company called Optex. And like I said, it has an LED, super bright LED design inside. And it's portable, which is nice. It kind of folds up and uh, you can do something with it. So I'm going to pull it out of the box. I'm going to show it to you. We're going to set it up. I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's set up. And we're going to take some photos with it and see what it's uh, all about. So let's get it out of the box. So here it is out of the box. It's got a little carry handle up here so you can carry it like this. It folds up into something about that uh, thick. And on the back it has an area, or sorry, uh, on the back it's nice and smooth. But on, this is actually the kind of front back. It has a pouch here and inside is all of your uh, connections for the LED light that's inside. There's your little power source and the two cords. Uh, it then opens like so. This part opens up, this part drops down, and it kind of goes like so. Then we'll turn it around so you get a closer look at it. It is like so, and then inside, if we open it this way, it opens this way as well. And inside are the two sides. It's a little hard to do it from this side. But there's the two sides, and everything is Velcroed. Now I get that side out, get this side out, in one spot. And it grabs the Velcro, Velcro quite nice. And then the top goes down, and then this part opens up. And then you have the opening of the, uh, uh, so you can take your pictures, you can put your items inside. There is a white background inside, and, it, and I'll show you what it comes with. And uh, we'll move in for a closer view, and I'll show you exactly what it comes this with. This also comes with four different color inserts. You kind of get a, a peach color, you get a black background, uh, they got Velcro on them so they kind of stick together a little bit. You get a black background, you get a gray background, and then you get the one that you're pretty much going to use full time, which is the white. And those can be put in here. This part flips down and uh, inside, you can see there's foil and everything on the inside. So what we're gonna do is put one of those inserts in and I'll show you what it looks like when I put one of those inserts in. So there it is with the white insert in and that's pretty much the one you're gonna use for the full time. Now you can see on the sides here that there is a black line where you can see where it turns and that's kind of part of the game. You have to do your shooting where you don't see it. What I've done is I've created, uh, not created, but I bought some white paper and I put it across this way so you can't really see that seam. Uh, we'll turn the light on and I'll show you what it looks like when the LED lights are on. And there we go. So it gets quite bright. It's a very bright light. Now the next model up, you can uh, adjust the light source, but I find that this works quite well. And what also uh, you have with this is if you decide you want to kind of do like a, a pinhole thing, you can put this up like the, this, like so, and you can open that and open this. And you can move in, you can put your item in here, and you can move your camera in if you want reflected light all over the place. It, uh, it does tend to uh, give you a nice picture, but I prefer to shoot uh, with the whole thing open. And I'll show you what's on the top as well. So hold now, on. Now on the top, you can clearly see there's another flap, and this opens so you can do um, shots from the top. Like if I were to put my hand in there, you can do. You know, I'm a hand model today. You can take shots from the top. So that's that's kind of nice to have if you want to do an overview of something. But that is the box as it sits. So now we're going to put a couple things in and just see how big we can put stuff in and what looks good and what doesn't look good. So uh, let's do that. Okay guys, just to show you a size difference. This is a 132nd Carrera little BMW uh, racing car. I'm a slot car fanatic. So here it is here, looks fairly nondescript. So let's put it in the uh, booth, turn the lights on and take a couple pictures and see what we come up with. Let's do that.
So there's a, a, a there it is sitting in the, the booth as it's uh, sitting on a piece of track, and there's going to be a couple of uh, still shots after this. So uh, you can see it's sitting on the track. Now, maybe that's something you don't want. Maybe you don't want it on the track. You basically just want it sitting like it's uh, in the white. So let's see what that looks like without the track. So there it is sitting um, without the uh, track and it's kind of sitting high up in the front end because it's got a slot of course and that's kind of why you put it on the track. But uh, there it sits and you can't, like what's nice about it is you don't see any kind of background seams. It just looks like it's kind of floating in space sort of thing. And uh, it brings out some pretty nice, uh, some pretty nice looks. I mean you can turn it this way and get a different side view. Uh, these cars are so well done for uh, 1 32nd. They're just so beautiful. And then you can bring it straight on if you want to have a straight on view or if you wanted to have a view like so. So let's take a shot from the top and see what that looks like when we go to the top and do a, a shot down from the top. Okay, one of the little drawbacks on this is this little flap has no way of holding back. There should have been a Velcro, Velcro strip on it, so I just put something with a little bit of weight to hold on to it. So here we are going to go in from the top, and let's see if we can pull that in a little bit. I'm still learning this new camera. So from the top you get that kind of view. Now there's going to be a couple stills to follow this, but uh, you can do overhead shots. Um, you know, and I don't know how close we can get in there, but I mean it looks pretty nice. The lighting is done very well and of course you're going to see some reflection on the uh, paint job of this car and I made a mistake this is not a 132nd this is a 143rd uh, slot car uh, I'm going to show you a 132nd here in a minute but uh, so yeah that seems to work fine for a 143rd or one yeah 143rd scale so let's put a 132nd uh, car in there and see what that looks like So here we have a beautiful 132nd, uh, this is Scale Electrics, they make some of the best stock cars out there uh, as far as detail. This is the CR7 Corvette that runs uh, Daytona, Le Mans, and no longer running in the circuit anymore. Now there's the, uh, the uh, C8, I guess we're up to the CR8 or C8. Yeah, the C7, the C8, we're up to C8 now. So this car is gone and the C8 now has a kind of uh, turboed six cylinder. It doesn't sound anything like it. When this was on the track, you sure knew it. But anyways, beautiful looking car. And I'll show you the difference in sizes. Uh, we'll move that one back a little bit and put that one there. So that's the difference between 143rd and 132nd. Now, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take some stills on the CR7 and just see what it looks like. Or C7, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and uh, see what that looks like. So what we've done here is we've taken a little bit of artistic license. This is a background out of one of the figures I got years ago, and uh, it's for a video game. I can't remember the name of it, but um, I decided to put it up and then put the two cars like they're racing down the road, uh, just to give you a forced perspective of, um, you know, just the background. And these are the kind of things you can do with these booths. Um, I think it comes through pretty nice. I mean, it's out of scale if you really want to get right down to it, but the whole idea is to get a nice picture uh, of, uh, you know, so you can use this booth to a certain degree. So 143rd and 132nd slot cars have no problem with this. So uh, I'm just going to take a picture uh, from the top of the Corvette and then we will move on to something a little bit bigger and just see what size of items we can put in here before we get too big. Okay, so uh, we already know that uh, six inch figures will work well, so we know 3.75 would work in here as well. And here's some pictures of some six inch figures that I took some pictures of uh, right here.
Okay, so now let's move on to something a little bit bigger. Let's move on to this snow speeder. Um, I'll give you a shot with my hand. There's my hand. So this is getting a little bit bigger. Now, can we get this all in the view without seeing the corners of the box? So uh, let's see if we can do that. Hold on one second. Okay, so by the two stills that I took there, you can see that I had to kind of move in close. I mean, uh, we're getting a little big now for what this box can handle without seeing those seams. So let's see how close we can get in. So basically right about there is about as, as close as we can get. I mean, you could do a, a straight on, you could do another side view if you wanted to. So uh, you do start to run into some constraints when you start getting into bigger stuff like this. So uh, this is the 3.75 size uh, snow speeder. And uh, you know, you're, you are running into some constraints here. Okay, so now we're going to move into the uh, Gallery Diamond Select. I think these are 10th scale. Um, I could be wrong, but I think they're either 10th or 12th scale. So you can see right here, if I decided to get him all into the picture, you would be seeing the seams on the side. So um, let's see how much of him I can get in here uh, when I take a still uh, before I see any seams. So let's do that. So you can see we're in about this close. We don't get the full statue in uh, because we just don't want to see those ugly seam lines, but we are able to pan him down and you still can get some very nice views. You can kind of pull in close on the face if you want to, but in order to get most of the statue in, uh, you're going to have to go. So it still seems to serve its purpose quite well for a gallery diamond select. So let's put in a six scale figure and see uh, what we can see with the six so scale So here figure. we have the Hot Toys uh, six scale Captain America. This is the Captain America in his stealth strike suit. And this is the suit he wore in um, Winter Soldier. So in order to get him all in here, I have to pull into about here, uh, which is fine. I mean, it gives some beautiful look to him, but if we want to have a look at him, we kind of got to move the camera up and down. And you can kind of see a little bit of the seam over here. So I could go in a little harder. You can kind of see that. So go in just a touch more. So there we go. So yeah, basically you're a, a six scale figure. I think you're going to push it about as far as you can. And with the six scale figure, you're probably just going to go in for certain parts, like maybe a close up of the face, uh, maybe a close up of the uniform, maybe the shield, the pose that you're setting, etc, etc. You're not going to get a full view at six scale. So this um, Optics Portable LED Photo Studio kind of has its limits at about six scale. I think it uh, is about where it's going to be. So I'm just going to take a couple of uh, close ups with uh, Captain America here and uh, we'll see what we get out of it. So the one thing we have to have a look at too is comic books and uh, this really is not going to work for comic books. This is uh, about as close as I can get uh, and I've got the plastic on it. Uh, there is a light diffuser that comes with this as well so you can tone it down a bit but uh, comic books are not going to work in here very well. It's just uh, too shallow. So this is more for smaller figures and uh, you know what we'll try a top view top down on this Thor book and see if we can get the whole thing in but I don't think this is going to work so well for comic books, but let's try a top view. So we are doing a top down look. Um, still you cannot get the full book in here. Um, it's just not going to work that way. But I mean, if you just wanted to do certain parts of the book, I mean, like let's say you just wanted to do uh, Beta Ray's face or maybe just the, the number of the book, 337, you know, that kind of thing before you fuzz out. 
But uh, if I go all the way back out to get the whole book, then you can see the sides. I mean, if you don't mind that kind of look, then yeah, you can get a, a comic book in here, no problem. But uh, that's not a look I care for. I kind of like the look where you can't see those sides. So right about there. But uh, I mean, it all depends how you feel about how you want to do things. But uh, I, I think it's okay. But I, will, I won't be showing comic books in this. It's just a little too small. Maybe the larger one might be the one for comic book guys. This is more for figures and cars and stuff like that. So, yeah, I have to give it a shot. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is my review on this Optex uh, Portable Photo Studio. The dimensions on this are 40 centimeters by 40 centimeters by 40 centimeters, which is about 16 by 16 by 16. So, uh, they do make a, a larger one and they do make a small one. I paid $149, but with taxes and everything, about $165 for this. Is it worth it? You know what? You can build one yourself uh, a lot smaller. The only reason I picked it up is because I like the fact that it had the light in it. I like the fact that it's portable. So if I want to take it to a show, I can. And I just want to have better quality photos. I'm trying to um, get to a point where I have better quality for you guys uh, on my videos and my... Uh, my uh, videos and, and, and my pictures I just you know I'm, and I'm using this new camera my wife got me and at the end I'll list all the equipment that I used uh, I use a older tripod uh, that is metal I don't go with the plastic ones because uh, I don't like the, the sway and the movement on the plastic ones but I'll list the equipment I use at the end and the cost of it so you have an idea but for 165 that may this may not be up everybody's alley but for me I think it works fine um, but like I said you could build your own very easily if you wanted to but, you know, if you're strapped for room and you can't have a photo booth up all the time, uh, it's nice to have this portable one. It takes about no less than a minute to put it up and uh, it's got lights and everything. It's, it's just great. But anyways, that's the review on the Optex, uh, Optex uh, Portable LED Photo Studio. The lights are nice. I really like it. Anyways, let me know what you think. I uh, hope you enjoyed the pictures. I've been loving taking pictures with this new camera in this photo studio. I've been having a great time and I'm happy to share them with you and I'm going to take a lot more because I love using this camera. Anyways, we will catch you on the next one, everybody. Area 51, so home of the superheroes. Catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.